Hello language learners! In this video I want to talk about the intermediate plateau and if you don't know what the intermediate plateau is, it's basically the idea that once you hit a certain level of your foreign language, you're, you're at an intermediate level, you kind of plateau, you kind of stop learning, you kind of feel like you stop improving. So in this video I want to explain kind of, you know, what it really is, what it really means, and I want to help to adjust the perspective on it so that it's not quite as dramatic and like an obstacle and so difficult. Instead of looking at the intermediate plateau as like a big scary difficult obstacle, I want to take another look at it and think of it more as like the difference between two different skill levels, your ability and what you should be doing in order to improve and what you can do with it. I really think that when we look at the intermediate plateau as like a wall that we hit, it really hurts us because I feel like language learners are kind of missing a piece of what the actual journey of learning a language is. And when they hit that intermediate plateau, it's because they're not shifting their expectations, they're not shifting their understanding of how they function in the language. So in this video, I'm going to help to explore that, explain that, and hopefully shift your perspective to help you understand how best to approach your language learning. As a general rule, language learning strategies should be really fluid and changeable and flexible and something that we can mold to better suit us. You know, we should be in charge of our language learning strategy. The difference between a beginner and an intermediate or advanced language learner is just one of those factors and it's really really it really really changes how we should be approaching our language learning and you know in my experience learning Spanish and French if you don't know I'm at an intermediate advanced level Spanish and a beginner level of French that really changes and shifts how I approach my language learning and my strategies and my resources and all these sorts of things. So I'm going to start off with a look at my Polylogger. If you don't know what Polylogger is, it's a resource that I really love, just like a simple tracking tool for what you're doing in your language learning, how often you're doing it. First, I want to take a look at my Polylogger to really see and understand the differences and how one should approach a beginner language and a much more experienced language. So here we have my Polylogger account. You can see that I am tracking both my French and my Spanish. And just right from here, you can see a huge difference. This is a difference that I'm going to be talking about and what this difference actually means. So just as a general example, French up here, you can see that, you know, the time that I spend is really short. You know, you can see this, this is the month view over the past month, what I've done. So you can see you have, you know, half an hour a day here, half an hour a day here, just on average, about 30 minutes a day. You know, this is about 45 minutes, something like that. But you see 20 to 30 minutes, like almost every day. There, there's a couple little breaks in here, like this right here. There's a couple breaks here, a couple breaks here. It's largely consistent over the long term but it's short. It's really short. It's like 20 to 30 minutes a day. Keep in mind that the amount of time per day and how often they're studying per day depends on each individual language learner. This is not, you know, the catch-all best routine for a beginner language. That's not what I'm saying. This is just what's working for me. And I want to compare this to my Spanish, which is more of an advanced level. So you see here, you scroll down, it's a lot choppier here. You know, there's Let's see, how much is this? This is almost an hour that day. This is one hour that day. This is an hour and a half. You can see that I'm spending a lot more time on the language, but it's significantly less consistent. You know, you have this whole week here where I did nothing and then I jumped right into an hour. With this in mind, I want to talk about three major differences between a successful routine for a beginner language and a more intermediate and advanced language. And I'm going to explain why those should be different and with that in mind, help you shift your perspective between there being a giant obstacle in your face for, you know, getting advanced and just a small shift in perspective. So first I'm going to talk about Beginners, when you first start learning a language and you're in the first like six months to a year, depending on, you know, depending on how often you're learning and all number of things, just, you know, when you're at the beginner level and you can't really understand a whole lot, you can't follow most content, definitely not for a long period of time. It gets really exhausting. Any input or output you do, any, you know, understanding the language or using the language takes significant effort and you really can't do it for that long, but 
the payout is really significant. You can really see improvements really, really quickly, you know, over weeks, over like a few days, we really see a lot of improvement really, really quickly. Now, how does that phase affect our routine, our strategy, how often we're learning? The first thing for beginners is that consistency is absolutely vital. And you know, consistency is a lot easier because we're seeing a lot of progress really quickly. There's a lot of quick wins because you know, we don't know a whole lot. So everything that we learn is really gratifying. So consistency is a lot easier just because just the payout is really quick and satisfying. Not only is it, you know, easier to be consistent when you're when you have a lot of quick wins, but consistency is super super important because use it or lose it is a big deal. Basically, when you're in the beginner phases, a lot of your information, a lot of your knowledge of the language is in your short-term memory. It takes a while to get to your long-term memory. So if you stop, if you, you know, pause even for a little bit, especially at the very, very beginner stages, you're gonna lose it really, really quickly. Basically, you know, you don't have that much knowledge. So when you lose some knowledge, you're losing a lot. It's like if you only understand, you know, one or two sentences and you leave it for a couple of weeks and you forget those two sentences, you don't know anything. As opposed to if you can understand like a dozen sentences and you leave for a couple of weeks and you forget two of them, you still have 10 sentences. That's a, that's a really simple way to look at it, but it gets the point across. The second thing about being a beginner is that a little bit goes a long way. So not only, like I said, do not have the stamina to be in a language a whole lot, understand a lot of language, speak the language a lot, but you also don't need that much. You really don't need to spend an hour on the language for to make a giant impact. You know, it's kind of like running when you're a beginner runner. Like, you know, if you can only run for five minutes, then it's not a lot, but you're exhausted. Your body is tired and your body is growing and your heart is getting stronger. So while you can't do a lot, you also don't need a lot as opposed to, you know, if you're training for a marathon, you need to run for like 10 miles or whatever in order for it to make a difference. You can run for 10 miles and that's awesome, but you also need to run that much in order for your body to be exercised. In that same sense, you can only really use the language and understand language for short periods of time, but you don't actually need any more than that anyways. Finally, the third thing about being a beginner language learner is accessibility. So even if you can't understand a whole lot of things, Generally for beginner language learners, not only is there a lot of content, but it's all free. So the basic idea is that, you know, when you're learning any new skill or hobby or subject or whatever, the beginner stuff is really, really easy to find. It's when you get past those beginner levels and you need more niche down specific information in order to grow, that's when you have to start paying for stuff. That's when you have to start paying for classes and for books and for teachers, private tutors, things like that. That's only really necessary when you've kind of exhausted all the free content out there that's available. It's the same kind of thing with language learning. You can always find, especially for the most popular commonly learned languages, you can always find beginner stuff. You can always find the beginner verbs, beginner conjugations, you know, 10 different ways to say hello, all sorts of things like that. It's really, really easy to find that kind of content for free. You might not understand really, you know, interesting things like a Netflix movie or things like that, but you're not gonna get tired of the stuff that's available for free and you know, grammatical explanations and things like that. So that's beginner. Now we're gonna shift from that French, the picture of my French polylogger, and we're gonna switch to Spanish. Now Spanish, if you don't know, I've been learning Spanish off and on for like a decade, starting with high school and college, and then eventually moved to Spain where I really learned a lot of Spanish. And I've been kind of going off and on since then. But my Spanish is pretty advanced. I can I can pretty much understand most anything, depending on the accent, of course. But I can I can understand most things. I can communicate in most settings. I'm, I'm at a pretty confident level, which means, you know, not only do I have a lot of knowledge, but I've also been learning for a long time. And that really shifts how I approach Spanish, what I can do with it, and you know, what I should be expecting out of myself. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what it's like to be at an intermediate or advanced level of a language. When you're advanced, you can pretty much figure out anything 
that you want to. You know, it might, it might take a little, you know, might have to like look up a word or two. It might have to take a second to understand like the difference in an accent or different subjects or things like that. But as long as you like take a second to figure it out, you can figure out pretty much anything in language. At this point, you know, you'll still continue to hit bumps in the road, but you have the stamina to sit there for an hour or 90 minutes speaking or listening or enjoying the language. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't require so much of your brain and your thinking and your processing. It doesn't take nearly as much energy to be involved with the language. What this does mean though is you're not gonna feel like you're improving as much because honestly you're not. You know, once you've conquered a certain level of processing and vocabulary and grammar and things like that, you know, the further you go, the less there is to learn. When there's not as much to learn, you're not going to feel the instant gratification, the quick wins of learning new things constantly. So how does that apply to a successful routine for an intermediate or advanced learner? First thing I'm going to talk about, just like with the beginner languages, is long-term memory. So when you're at these stages, you have a lot more information in your long-term memory, which means you can take a lot more breaks. As you saw with my polylogger, I don't study Spanish every day. Um, I try to get in Spanish when I can, when I feel like it, when it's, you know, enjoyable, but it's really not a priority for me to touch it every day or every other day because I know that I'm not going to lose it if I leave it for a week. It's not going to make a big difference because I have so much information in my long-term memory. So back to the metaphor of the sentences, I have, you know, a thousand, let's say, for example, a thousand sentences in my brain. And if I lose 10 of them, that's not going to make a big deal. Not only do I have the ability to lose those 10 sentences without it, you know, making a huge impact, but I have so much contextual information like verbs and conjugations and vocabulary that I'm also more able to figure out things that I've forgotten as I go. That happens to me all the time when I have learned intermediate vocabulary, advanced vocabulary in the past, but then I read my intermediate short stories book and you know these words come back up and I've forgotten the translation, it's like I remember saying the word and I used to know it, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. I can go through the context of what's happening in the story and I can remember. I can use that context to bring it back into my memory. It's a lot easier to bring those memories back. I don't have to, you know, study hard to bring that stuff back. I didn't lose as much relevant information as I had before. So not only can you easily take a break, easily take a week or two off, and it's not going to be a big deal, but it's much easier to get back just because you have so much more relevant information that you can pull from to remember. Second thing, you know, talking back about stamina, while you're a beginner, you don't have a whole lot of stamina. And also you don't need that much stamina in order to, you know, learn something new. When you're an intermediate or advanced learner, you've got a lot more stamina. You, you can sit there and watch a whole movie. And you know, at the end of the movie, it might be a little tiring. You might be a little bit tired, but you could probably, you know, stick your way through it or, you know, just watch 30 minutes at a time. You can watch 30 minutes of a show and you'll be okay. And you could, you know, pick things up as you go and you're not, you know, completely brain dead exhausted because you had to spend so much energy doesn't take as much energy to sit there for an hour. Well, you know, those 30 minutes doesn't make as much a big of a deal as it is when you're a beginner. It's not nearly as important. You know, remember also that when you're an advanced learner, you have, you know, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours that you've already put into it. So another 30 minutes isn't that big of a deal. I suppose somebody's only put 50 hours into a language. Those 30 minutes isn't really that important, so it's not gonna make a huge deal. While you might not be progressing per se, you can also enjoy the language. And I think that right there is a big difference. I think that right there is a big thing with the intermediate plateau that a lot of people experience. You know, you may not be making huge strides in the language. You might not feel giant progress and get those quick wins and think, oh yes, I finally understand the past tense. That finally makes sense. You don't get that gratification anymore, but you can enjoy and you should enjoy the language in new ways. You can now finally understand music, understand movies, 
understand a conversation. You can enjoy the language for what it is, not just as something that you learn. You derive joy from different parts of the language and shifting that perspective, shifting what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to do with the language. That I think that is the key. You don't have to work nearly as hard, which means the payoff as to learning the language itself, there isn't so much of that anymore, but you can enjoy the language now. You can enjoy the culture. You can pick up new cultural references and understand the language in a more complex human way. And that is a nice segue to the third feature. Remember before when I was talking about the beginner languages, I talked about accessibility, how it's much more accessible to find beginner content for free or for cheap. When you hit that advanced stage, you know, actually learning isn't quite as accessible in that way. So it's not necessarily as easy to find, you know, advanced lists that are, you know, already cherry picked and, you know, easy to find, you know, for example, the, the most, the most common 1000 words in language, you can easily find that on the internet. But when you look for, I don't know, I don't even know how you would do that. Like the 1000 least common words. I don't know. See, you, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. In that way, it's not nearly as accessible. It's not nearly as easy to pick things up that you can, you know, tangibly see as new information. But like I said, it's accessible in the way that you can go onto Netflix and watch a movie. You can buy a movie and, you know, enjoy the movie in that sense. You just need to enjoy the language in a different way. That is all I have on this video on the intermediate plateau and the difference between beginner and advanced language learning. I really hope that this is helpful for you. Please let me know in the comment section below, you know, if you have experience with the intermediate plateau, if that's something that's, you know, really frustrating and really presents as an obstacle for you. And, you know, if this shift in perspective is helpful, that's, that's my goal. I really want to help people see that, you know, these obstacles, they don't have to be obstacles if we understand them for what they are. I really do believe that, you know, we just need to shift how we see our language learning when we hit certain levels and that will solve our problems. Basically, it'll be significantly less frustrating because we don't want our language learning to be frustrating. We want to enjoy it, you know. Other than that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday and Sunday. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. <laughs>